Okay, we're starting on the Photoshop lesson for chapter one, and that's going to be what's called Eagle here. And so we've got Photoshop open. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reset Photoshop by clicking on Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. Then I'm going to come over here. Notice that I'm in the option bar. I'm going to go to the active tool in the option bar. I'm going to right click and select reset all tools. OK, so now we've done what we need to do to start with in Photoshop. So the next thing we need to do is download the image we're going to be working with. And in this case, we're working with the image called eagle.jpg. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on eagle.jpg. And I'm going to select download eagle.jpg. Now, before you do anything else, you need to click on this little upward pointed arrow of a carrot here and select show in folder. And what you want to make sure of is where that actually went. And you can see that mine went to my name, my downloads folder. As long as you haven't changed any of the settings on your computer, that should be where yours went to. So knowing that, now we're going back to Photoshop and we're pretty much done in Canvas for a little while. So now, if you're, I'm on page number 11, and I'm going to File, Open. And what I'm going to do is click on this PC, go to my Downloads folder, Open. And here it is, Eagle. And I'm going to click on Open. Okay, so that basically took us through to through page 13. And there's some other pages here which we're not going to be going into in great detail. The next thing we're going to do is save this image, but we're saving it as a PSD. If you look on page number 19, you're going to see that they mentioned the various file types. When we downloaded it, we downloaded it as a JPEG. Dot jpg and that's a very good format for putting things on the web and for transferring images it's very compact the problem is it isn't going to work for us when we're working in photoshop because we need it in the psd file what the psd file is going to do for us is save that photoshop information okay so for that i'm going to come up here now i'm going to go to file i'm going to go to save as now, I'm going to put it somewhere different this time. I'm going to go to this PC again. This is where I want you putting your pictures to. And you're going to go ahead and put it in the pictures folder, okay? And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be calling this Eagle Video, okay? And I'll put it into a slightly, you don't need to have a separate Photoshop folder. Just put it in your pictures folder. But here's the thing. I want you to click on JPEG right here and select Photoshop. You're saving this as a star.psv format. Okay, so with it, and now called, e I'm, the main key here is selecting Photoshop file here. Go ahead and save. So now you can see up here, it's yours probably just says eagle.psd. And that's the main thing. You see say.psd. Make sure your rulers are showing. If your rulers are not showing, go ahead and press Control R, as in Control Romeo, to be able to see those rulers. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and turn some pages here. They mention uh, and that, by the way, that was on page, started on page 20, viewing photos. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the zoom tool. And you see that right here. Click on the zoom tool, click on it. And I can just click on the picture and that's going to allow me to zoom in on that picture. Okay, so I can zoom in using the zoom tool. Now, if I want to navigate around the image after I've zoomed in, go to window. Come down here to Navigator. You'll notice that that put this here of a red box. I can press the left mouse button down inside the red box, and as long as I hold it, I can drag that red box around. You notice the Navigator tool here on the vertical dock. Okay, so that was the Navigator tool. Let's go ahead and turn the page, and turn the page again. So we minimized it, yes. We can change the magnification down here. Now, I'm going to purposely zoom in a lot because I want to make sure I show you guys something. Okay, you see all of these squares. Each of these squares is a pixel, and I understand it does not look it, but each of these squares is only one color. Fundamentally, this is how Photoshop works, by editing the color in or by editing individual pixels, individual squares. Okay, and you saw that I changed the magnification by typing it also down here. Or I could just press Control-0, and that'll bring it back. And I'm going to purposely zoom in a bit so we can go ahead, and it says type in 20 down here. And that's on page number 29, so I'll put in 20, enter, and there we go. 
Okay, so that was basically moving around in the image, showing the rulers, all of that stuff is done. At this point, we're gonna start editing the image. And the first thing we're gonna do is start cutting away part of the image. That's on page number 32. And so we're gonna use the cropping tool. So I'm gonna select the cropping tool right here. Make sure up here you've selected rule of thirds, okay? Now, I'm moving my cursor somewhere there where there really is nothing. And I'm gonna click not clicking, just click. What I want here is I want this vertical line to be on the eagle's chest, and I also want this horizontal line to be over the eagle's chest. So having chosen cropping, rule of thirds, I'm going to go to this bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to press and hold the shift key down. This actually is very important to be holding the shift key. Now, if I don't pull the shift key, what happens here is it does goofy stuff. And I'm purposely doing this to make sure you see that it just basically looks awful. Control Z. So I need to actually go up in the history box. I'm checking that just undo that. Good. Okay. So now in a close, by the way, this is the history tool right here. So I'm going to go to this bottom right hand corner. I'm going to hold the shift key down with my left hand. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down, and I'm simply going to drag the mouse over to the left until, and you can see it, I'm releasing the mouse button, I'm releasing the shift key, until this line right here is over the eagle. Now, I'm not touching anything else in the meantime. I'm going to move the cursor right here. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down. I am holding the left mouse button down. Come on. And... I'm going to move this image so that the eagle's chest is on that cross. So that there's nothing over here on this side coming through. So that it's lined up just like this. And what I did was I pressed the left mouse button down and I simply pushed this image upward until that line was on the eagle's chest. This is what we want it to look like right now. Once you get it looking like this, and it may take a couple of tries. If you get it wrong, you can undo by clicking on this circle with the line through it. Once you have it the way you want it, you can either click on the check mark or you can press enter on your keyboard. Now it's done cropping away or cutting away the rest of the image. If you want to do anything else to this, you'll have to go into the history, undo that crop by clicking above the crop, and then starting that part again, just so you're aware. Okay, now I'm going to go leave the cropping tool by clicking on a separate tool. It's a, it's a good idea to make sure you don't leave your Photoshop tool sitting on a destructive tool. A destructive tool is basically any tool that if the cat were to walk across your keyboard, it would mess up your picture. That's a destructive tool. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and save. We probably, uh, again, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to press the letter S. You may have seen very quickly it flashed down here at the bottom that it was saving. The next thing we're going to do now is create a border. And that starts on page number 35, okay? So on page number 35, it takes us, tells us to start making a border. A border is a decorative edge around the image. And now we're on page number 36, and up here we're going to go to Select All. Okay, you see that dotted line around this? Now, I want to return to my default colors down here, so I'm going to press the letter D as in Delta on my keyboard, and that put these as the default colors, okay? The next thing I'm going to do here after doing that is I'm going to go ahead and put in the border, okay? So we've got the border there, applying a stroke to this border. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to edit, stroke, see where I'm at. Just like a paintbrush, you know, applying a stroke to the painting. And now we're going to make this 75. And note that it's set to center, normal, 100%. 75 and this is black if you press d on your keyboard when i told you to it's black if it isn't click on cancel and do that then come back to this point now i'm going to click on ok now you see that black border around the outline of the image great so that's a start now we're going to go ahead and modify this selection so big surprise we're going to go to select modify border, and we're going to set that to 50. If you don't have 50 here, change it to say 50 and click on OK. Now you notice the two sets of marquees going around this here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the foreground background colors. And 
So I've got black over white because I pressed the letter D. Now I'm going to press the letter X as in X-ray. And I now have white over black. Okay. Now I'm going to go to edit. Again, I'm going to go to stroke. And I'm going to change this to 25. This color should be white right now. If it isn't, cancel and go ahead and make sure you have white over black. And I've gone through how to do that. D for default and X to reverse these two colors. Now I'm going to click on OK. And now you see, the, just a minute. Okay, so at this point, you can see the uh, basically the border here, how it's got a 3D look to it. To get rid of these dotted lines, there are two ways. The book tells you to come up here and click on Select, Deselect. That works. I would have just pressed Control D as in Delta, but they both work. And you notice now you see that border around it, that 3D looking border. If you don't have that, you need to go back in the history here and work your way up like one step at a time until you're and then just work your way through to where you were right, wherever it was that you were doing it right, and then just start working your way back through it. You can see how the history tool works as I'm doing this at the same time. We actually go over the history book in chapter, or history two in chapter two, but it's easy to learn how to do it now. Okay, let's go ahead and save again, control S. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is resize this document. And there's something that can go wrong there. So we're on page number 44. Now we're on page number 45. Change, resizing, changing the dimensions of the photo. So what I'm going to do here, first I'm going to close the history tool. You can see right here, I'm going to click on that in the vertical doc. Is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to image, image size. Now, here's the thing. They make this one uh, hard to get. Do not change this section here unless you know why you're doing it. There are reasons why you change pixels. Like as an example, if I want to make a picture fit on fit a web page or something, a web board, and it says something like you know to, to put up a 100 by 200 pixel image. That's where you can change this. But otherwise, unless you really know why you're working at the individual dots in the picture, leave this alone. You're going to come down here to document size, okay? So we're going to go to height, and we're going to change that to 4. And you notice that it changed the other one as you did that. That's because they're linked, and what chose to make them linked was checking on constrained proportions. That should have already been checked for you. And so once we did that, it also changed the width. So I'm now going to click on OK. And that's really small. I'm going to press Control Zero to bring that back up. Okay, now I'm going to save again, Control S. And now we're on page number 47. We're going to start applying some of the text to this image. So now we're going to go to the horizontal type tool, which is the big T right here. Right click on that guy. Come on. Oh, come on, stop being slow. Okay, there we go. Okay, right click on that guy. Make sure you've selected the horizontal type tool. Come on. Good. Now, up here in the fonts, we're going to choose Tahoma. And you notice that they're in alphabetical order, and you want the ones with the big O in front of them. That basically means that it's a that it works well in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm coming down here until I find Tahoma. There it is, Tahoma. So I found Tahoma. Uh, let's see. And that was page number 47. Now I'm looking to see what font size they want. So I'm on page number 48. And it looks like they want this to be bold. So you see where I'm at right here. I'm going to choose bold. Okay, so let's see here. We've got Tahoma. We've got bold. And I'm still looking for the font size they want, if you're wondering what's going on here. Um, font size, they want 36. So... Let's go ahead and make that 36 point font. Okay, now this needs to be white. If this is not white, first off, it already should be because we left, because we are, have white on top here. But if it's not, you'll click on that and you'll go to the top left hand, or top, sorry, top, yeah, top left hand corner is always white. And the bottom corners you can see are always black if you need black, okay? But it should it should already be white. But so let's go ahead and I'm just going to click on OK. Now we're going to go ahead and put in a bounding box. And it, so I'm coming to right about here. OK. And I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down and drag. And you notice as I'm dragging, you see that W and H right there. OK. So I want it to be about two and a half inches wide. So I want that W around two and a half. And I want the height to be about two.
yeah, I see that I went off by a little bit. Don't worry about that part, okay? We can we can fix that. Now we're going to go ahead, this layer right here, we're going to type in national. Then I'm going to hit enter, wildlife, enter, park. Okay, now you notice right now it still says just layer one. I can either click on the check mark or I can press enter on my keyboard. Now, now I have a layer over here called National Wildlife Park. We're going to get into layers a lot more in Chapter 3, but there's absolutely no way I can talk about this, about do Photoshop without talking about layers. And so basically each of these is in a lot of ways its own separate picture. Okay, so if National Wildlife Park, we've made it, but maybe it's not where you want it. With the Wildlife Park layer selected, and you know it's selected because it's in that uh, bluish gray instead of the ugly brownish gray. They're both ugly, but this one's kind of bluish. And so I'm going to come up here with it with the National Wildlife Park layer selected, background selected, Wildlife Park layer selected. I'm going to select the Move tool. Now I can move this to wherever I want it. Now, of course, as it was, it was where I wanted it. So I'm going to put it right back where it was. There we go. That's where it was. Good. So that basically was the National Wildlife Park layer. And that took us through page number 49. At this point, we're going to apply that black outline to this text. The black outline we're going to refer to as a stroke. So making sure that the National Wildlife Park, National Wildlife Park layer is selected, we're going to come down here and we're going to add layer style. And that's the FX down here at the bottom. I'm going to click on that and then come up here to stroke. Now, it's already black. Again, if it isn't black, you'd come over here, you'd click on it and select black. Okay. And now sort of watch as I move this slider. See what I'm looking at? Okay, now I believe the book said um, one. I'll tell you, anywhere from one to five. Some students like five, and that's fine. Anywhere from one to five is fine. I personally usually go up to, oops, well, that was wrong. That was 53. I just want three. Okay, so you get the idea. Anywhere from one to five, and applying that stroke to the text there, and click on OK. Good. Now, the only other thing I want you to do that's not in the book here, okay, is I want you to go ahead and put your name on this using the same font here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the tool here. You notice that it's still the same. We're going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, though. Put your name in size. Oh, we'll go with 12 point font. And I'm just going to come up to about here. I'm going to press and hold. I'm going to draw a new bounding box and go ahead and put in your name. And apply a stroke to your name. I mean, okay, one thing you'll notice that when I did that, I messed up my National Wildlife Park layer here. We'll fix that in a second. Okay, let's, let's stay working on this layer right here, okay? So I came over here and I clicked on that layer. Now, for stroke, because we're using a lot smaller font, go ahead and make the stroke. In this case, do use the one, okay? So just one. And putting a very fine outline around your name. Okay. Now, I told you we're going to fix this. Of course, we are. Let's click on the National Wildlife Park layer now, and we're going to come back up here to size, and we're going to change that back to 36 like it was. Now it's back the way it was. Great. Now let's make sure. So we basically got your name. These are sort of lined up sort of on this edge right here. Your name can be smaller if you don't want. I mean, you can go something bigger than 12 if you wanted to. Just, I mean, don't go out. Don't go outrageous on it. And by the way, you notice how I selected that text? Let me come over here somewhere else. I can click on that layer. I actually don't even have to select it. That way I can come up here and I can change the font size there if I want to. Again, don't go too big. 24 is big enough for your name. Okay. And at 24, you might even want to go with a font with a stroke uh, size of two. So I'm going to come over here on this one here. What I'm going to do now is I, I want to change that stroke size. I'm going to double click on that right there. And I'll change that to two. And okay. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so now let's save. Control S. Uh, you can ignore this when you want to save. You can go ahead and check do not show again. The reality is uh, the only reason I don't check this box is because I want students to see that that box shows up when I do stuff. Let me go ahead and save. Okay.
So now you've gone ahead and you've saved this. Now, the final thing we want to do is we're going to save it as a JPEG so that you can turn it in in Canvas. So I can come here, File, Save As, one more time. Eagle. Now, this time, where it says Format here, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to select the top JPEG option. It looks like there are three JPEG options. The truth is there is only one. See, this one's JPEG 2000. This one's JPEG Stereo. This one is just JPEG, the top JPEG option. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on Save. And it's going to ask me about this. You just leave it wherever it is. You can set that to maximum if you want. Just quality. The only time you'd want a lower quality here is if you're saving an image for the web and you want it to load faster, you might want to lower that quality. But that's the only place where you'd do that. You notice I just grabbed this thing, and I yanked it all the way over to the right. And so now I'm going to click on OK. It now saved it as a JPEG. So now you can go ahead and turn this in. I'm going to go through the process of turning something in in Canvas real quick, just in case you don't know how to do that. So I'm going to come over here to Canvas, and I'm going to go to the assignment. So I'm over here in Canvas. Click on Home. Da, 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 da. So I'll come down here to the assignment, wherever that is. National Wildlife Park Required. And I would click on National Wildlife Park Required. I'm going to purposely click on Student View here so you guys can see it from a student point of view. And I would click on this right here, choose a file to upload. Then I'm going to go, this is part of the reason I told you to be sure of where you're putting these. I'm going to go to Pictures, which is where we had this. And in pictures, you will probably find it somewhere here in your pictures. In my case, I put it in Photoshop, and I would come down here, and somewhere I've got uh, Eagle Video. Here it is. And so I go ahead, and I click on Open, and it's going to open that up, and it's going to submit that for me. And when I'm all done, I will click on Submit Assignment. Okay? So, and that took us all the way through the main activity for Chapter 1.